Someone once said that you can't go home again, but they lacked vision. And a temporal discombobulator. <laughs> Hello all and welcome to a new video in Let's Make WoW Great Again. Today we're gonna have a look at the class Mage and what race to choose with it. So if you wanna learn more, stick around. A mage is a damage dealer using magic and you really want to stay out of uh, melee fights whenever possible at all cost because you're a really, really soft target. Now you can consider yourself a glass cannon. Massive amount of damage, but very, very fragile. So what are the pros and cons of being a mage? Well, like I said, you're doing a tremendous amount of damage. You have great AOE spells. You can conjure your own water and food, which will save you a lot of money in the long run. And you have the ability to make portals to the big cities, either for yourself or your friends. So, what are the cons of being a mage? Well, as I told before, you're a very soft target. And melee fighters will make a big, big dent on your health bar if you encounter them. You also have a tendency to pull aggro when you're raiding, especially, especially if you're a good mage doing a lot of damage. So this is something to be aware of, that you can control the aggro of the spells generated, so you don't become a target. You will also have your fair share of hotkeys. This is to stay out of those melee situations that we were talking about, and when raiding, you might be the guy who has to do crowd control. So, let's take a look on what race to choose. Either your alliance or horde. So, let's kick off with the alliance. Well, you have two races to choose from, and that's human and gnomes. And um, gnomes is basically better on PvE and PvP. And, well... Gnomes is a funny word. It starts with a G, but it's silent. And that, my name starts with a G as well, so whenever I'm on a help desk with a guy from India and he asks me to spell my name, I say G, like in gnome. And they go all silent. Every single time, and it's kind of funny. But... <laughs> Over to WoW Classic here. Yes, gnomes are better than humans in PvP and PvE. Humans on the Alliance side is more of the versatile ones. Their strength is 20, agility 20, stamina 20, intellect 20 and spirit 21. Now, a gnome has 15 strength. 23 Agility, 19 Stamina, 24 Intellect, and 20 Spirit. And as a Mage, you want to have good Intellect and good Spirit, because you need that Mana too. You can't just go on Intellect. Let's take a look at the Racial Traits. Humans, Diplomacy. Reputation gains increased by 10%. The human spirit increased spirit by 5%. Mace specialization, skill with mace and two-handed mace are increased by 5. Sword specialization, skill with sword and two-handed swords increased by 5. Perception, dramatically increased stealth detection for 20 seconds and has a three minute cooldown. Gnome, escape artist. 
escapes the effect of any immobilization or movement speed reduction effect. One second cast, one minute cooldown. Expansive mind, increase intellect by 5%. Arcane resistance, increased by 10%. Engineering specialist. Engineering skill increased by 15. So, with the higher intellect and the racial intellect buff, um, there is no doubt that no is the way to go for a mage on the alliance side. Now, let's take a look at the horde side, and that's another story because this is kind of preferential and what you're planning to do. So, back in the days in World of War Classic, there was a common knowledge that uh, Undead were the best PvP fighters as a mage, and the Trolls were the best PvE. But, due to some racial traits being nerfed on the Undead side, this, uh, I don't know how the World of War or Warcraft Classic will be in the summer, if the nerfs will be there from the start or not. So it's kind of hanging there in the air. But for my part, I would definitely choose a troll. But let's take a look at the races and traits. The undead has 19 in strength, 18 in agility, 21 in stamina, 18 in intellect, and 25 in spirit. Will of the Forsaken. Provides immunity to charm, fear, and sleep while active. May also be used while already afflicted by charm, fear, or sleep. Last 5 seconds and has a 2 minute cooldown. Now, Will of the Forsaken got nerfed in patch 3.3 back in the days. And this is why it's hanging in the air if you should go undead or troll when doing PvP as well. Uh, because I don't know if this uh, nerf will be from the start or if it will get there when World Classic comes out in the summer. Cannibalize. When activated, regenerate 7% of total health every 2 seconds for 10 seconds. Only work on humanoids or undead corpses within 5 yards. Any movement, action or damage taken while cannibalization will cancel the effect. And there is another neat neat thing. Underwater breeding. Underwater breaths last 300% longer than normal. Shadow resistant. Shadow resistant increased by 10%. Trolls, 21 Strength, 22 Agility, 21 Stamina, 16 Intellect, and 21 Spirit. So it has less Intellect and less Spirit um, than the Undead, but their racial traits is very, very good, and this is why. Berserking. Increase your casting and attack speed by 10% to 25%. At full health, the speed is increased by 10%, with a greater effect up to 20, 25% if you're badly hurt range. when you activate Berserking. It lasts for 10 seconds and has a 3 minute cooldown. This will make your damage output way, way better, which again can compensate for the lack of intellect on the troll side. They also have regeneration. Health regenerated rate increased by 10%. 10% of total health regeneration may continue during combat. And that's another thing that is quite nice to have. Beast slaying. Damage dealt versus beast is increased by 5%. Another buff. And for PvE this is quite good because you will fight beast most of the time, so it's very good for leveling and very good for raiding. Throwing bow specialization. That's not throwing a bow, but it's throwing and bow. Skill with throwing slash bow, a weapon increased by five. So now it's basically up to you what you choose. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up 
and subscribe if you want to know more. In my next video I will take the different specs a mage have and how to level, which is the best for leveling, best for PvE, best for PvP and so on. We will see the different combinations and I hope that will help you in growing your mage. This is Sneaky Woolcloth, see you next week.